Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I got a pretty exciting video to go over with you today where we're going to actually compare the Tesla Powerwall 3 to the Enphase ecosystem. And you might be asking why we're doing that. Well, because Tesla launched a phenomenal DC architecture focused first product and is paving the way for the future in terms of solar and storage on your home and how it all works together. But that doesn't mean the other equipment that's been on the market, like the Enphase AC coupled batteries and their microinverters don't still have a place. So I thought it was perfect time to do a comparison video and discuss the pros and cons of each approach, one being in DC architecture and the other being in AC architecture. Now, for those of you that are interested in going solar and you're ready to make the switch to clean renewable energy, go ahead and use the link down in the description below. We're certified partners for a large range of products to meet anyone's needs or wants and budget. We have a range of solutions that you're probably gonna wanna learn more about. So go ahead, use the link down in the description below so you can request your hassle-free quote today. Now let's talk about the differences between a DC architecture and an AC architecture first, because that's really what's going to be important to note when you're making the decision on which direction you wanna go. Do you want Enphase microinverters or do you want a Tesla Powerwall 3 inverter? Again, this is a hybrid centralized inverter. So let's break it down. Now with the DC architecture, you're gonna generate solar energy up on the roof with your solar panels. And that energy is going to pass through a rapid shutdown device. This is required by code in case of an emergency and it stops the DC voltage at the module or array level. This is a very simple device. They're pretty basic in many ways, especially for Teslas. There's no monitoring integrated with these devices, but they are required by code. Now with Enphase, that DC energy is immediately converted to AC energy on the roof. And that is still serving as a rapid shutdown device because in an emergency, if you shut off any portion of the system, it's going to immediately stop the solar production from coming down the roof and of course keep the DC voltage you know contained right at that microinverter so that is one thing to take into account you're still always attaching something up on the roof because of the code requirements the only difference is with Tesla's configuration, there are fewer parts actually involved. So with their MCI, their solar shutdown device, that is attached to, for one for every three panels roughly, it could be two, could be one, but it is designed for a maximum of three panels. That's really valuable when you're trying to keep costs down. You will look typically at an Enphase system and see it's more expensive because there are more components involved. You're attaching an inverter to every single panel up on the roof. And that's how you're able to achieve that module level monitoring. Now, SolarEdge is a partner of ours and they also have a DC coupled architecture, but they offer module level monitoring unlike Tesla. Now we're not comparing in this video against SolarEdge, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for that video if you're interested in learning more about the solar edge uh, advantages over the Tesla Powerwall and Powerwall's advantages over solar edge. Now, let's get back to this DC AC architecture. So, we understand that on the Tesla Powerwall configuration, the modules are generating direct current that is passing through a rapid shutdown device and then it's going straight to the inverter down below with the battery that's integrated into it. Much like the EP cube here right behind me. We have the inverter on the top batteries below it. So when you have those solar panels on the roof, it passes right through the inverter. It doesn't have to do anything besides maybe regulate that voltage in the amps to recharge the battery. So you're getting a DC to DC charging experience, which is really nice. Now with the Enphase system, one of the biggest advantages Enphase tends to have is the fact that you have a microinverter attached to every single solar panel up on the roof that's converting that DC energy instantaneously to AC energy. But then the downfall is when you get to the battery, right over here, the microinverters within the battery need to convert that AC energy back to DC energy so that way it can be stored within the device. And the data doesn't necessarily make it very clear on which architecture 
has more loss. So what we find is in an AC coupled configuration, usually the round trip efficiency, we're going from DC to AC, back to DC, back to AC. Your round trip efficiency is about 90%, where what we're finding in most DC architectures is like the EP-Cube, this is about 93.9% .9 for its round trip efficiency. And Tesla's isn't too far off in terms of that in round trip efficiency. So you're not gaining a whole lot more by the DC architecture, but 3% or 4% does add up over time. So there is some value to that architecture, just maybe not as much as some have really promoted in terms of it being superior over an AC configuration. I don't necessarily think that's true, but both of them do have a great deal of advantages when it comes to expandability. N-phase microinverters definitely make it easy for you to expand your solar system over time, and the Powerwall 3's hybrid inverter supporting up to 20 kilowatts of solar with six MPPTs definitely allows for that as well. So is one going to be inherently much better than the other long term? Well, I mean, the data supports that you'll likely see more energy out of the Powerwall 3 because you're not having as much efficiency loss in terms of round trip, right? Going from DC to AC and then from AC back to DC. So there is some value there, three, maybe 4%, depending on how you wanna look at it in your particular location. But that is definitely something I wanted to point out as a comparison to consider when looking at the two technology. Now, what I would recommend for those of you that really want Enphase microinverters, because they are a phenomenal product, we love servicing those systems because it's really easy for us as installers to go, hey, that's the panel that's not working. We can open up an RMA remotely and we can get that microinverter replaced under warranty rather quickly compared to doing it with like a string inverter with the Powerwall 3, what are we gonna have to do? We're gonna be able to look at the string level data. And we're gonna be able to compare that data to historical data to see what's going on, but then we're still gonna have to send a technician out there and do some further troubleshooting in the field to actually figure out what the heck is going on and what panels, if any, are underperforming. So there is that advantage. So if you really like that architecture that Enphase has to offer, I would recommend going with a solar plus storage configuration or a self-consumption design. So you get your solar panels, get your Enphase microinverters, get your Enphase 5P batteries, but then wait for them to release their version of the backup switch that Tesla has, because that's where the biggest savings is between the Powerwall 3 and everybody else on the market is that backup switch, the, the collar that goes behind the meter that allows for us to offer you whole home backup without all the extra equipment. We don't need an automatic transfer switch because that's what the meter collar is, that backup switch. And we don't need an emergency loads panel because your electrical loads panel is now your emergency loads panel. So it does simplify a lot of things. Now, if you have an Enphase system and you wanted to consolidate that, you definitely could do it with the Schneider Electric Smart Panel. The Pulse panel that they offer is universal. You don't have to go with the Schneider Inverter and Schneider Boost battery, but you could integrate it with an Enphase system and have that same effect that you get with the Tesla Powerwall 3. Now, is it talking to the Enphase system? Not at this time, but I'm hopeful that Schneider Electric opens up their API for their Pulse panel for other manufacturers to be able to integrate with it. So you open your Schneider Home app and you can see your Enphase microinverters, you can see your Enphase batteries, and you can see what's going on with your electrical panel. That's the dream, maybe that'll never come. For right now though, what you wanna kind of focus on is at least getting a solar system with some storage in place. Whether that's with the Powerwall 3, giving you whole home backup, or going with a simplified version and waiting for the backup. If you're not having power outages, you know, why do you want the backup right now? Let's wait for the technology to catch up. Tesla's paving the way for everybody else to follow suit with the backup switch, that little meter collar. It, it's a big deal how important this component is for the industry as a whole, but we're not gonna see everybody just overnight have the same product 
but we can. It's getting there, you know? So another year or two, Enphase is likely to have their version of a meter collar. EPCube is likely to have a version of their meter collar. Solar Edge, everybody is going to eventually have a meter collar because it makes the most sense. But you gotta have the technology that supports it. And Enphase's batteries, those five Ps, do support the power rating if you at least have three of them that's equal to the one Powerwall 3. So you have a comparable configuration. And if you look at a quote from us, with a Powerwall 3 to an Enphase self-consumption design, you'll find that the price is within about $1,000 in most cases and or could be equal depending on the solar panels that you select. So there is some flexibility there in, in getting what you want right now, and but also having the ability to upgrade that equipment in the future. Now, if you just wanna go with a full backup system and just go with the DC architecture, by all means, you can do that. We have that available for you. We've had tons of customers that are excited for the Powerwall 3. I'm really excited for it. It's definitely a product that I think is worth having this conversation on and comparing it with what we've been known to offer the most of, which is the Enphase microinverters, because that has been a phenomenal product as well. And we're really excited what Tesla has put out there and what Enphase is going to have available in the market. Both of these manufacturers are going to have power share capabilities. And what I mean by that is they're both gonna allow you to utilize your electric vehicle in the future to power your home during a grid outage and to charge your electric vehicle from your excess solar energy during the day during a power outage. So that way you can really get a full backup experience and not have to worry about a prolonged power outage. You got a 100 kilowatt hour battery in your car, why not tap into that and use it during an emergency situation. Now, I'm not saying deplete the entire battery, but use it within reason for that particular situation. And who knows, maybe these manufacturers can develop a virtual power plant network that lets you sell the excess energy in your car that you don't need back to the grid to earn more credits. I mean, to see that type of development going on, I think is really important to note. You don't wanna overlook that type of feature or capability or future proof of the technology. You wanna go with a solution where they're constantly innovating, constantly redeveloping, like Schneider Electric has done with the smart panel, the pulse panel, and what Enphase has done with the 5P batteries, and what Tesla has done with the meter collar and the Powerwall 3. They're all thinking forward. They're all thinking about the future and how we're going to need energy on our own homes. I mean, we've literally gone in 100 years from having to buy electricity from the utility company to actually having the ability, the technology, to put solar panels up on our roofs individually, right? Convert that energy to usable form for our home because we don't use DC architecture for our home appliances and stuff like that and be able to actually store it on site as well for the energy that we're not consuming. That's freaking amazing. That should get you really excited about the future, about renewable energy for your home because you can literally become independent of the grid. Yeah, you're still connected to it. You're going to have some small charges. There's, there's no getting around that, but do you at least have the ability to go, hey, I want to be my own power plant. I want to be my own storage plant. I want to be my own consumer. You are at that point a prosumer. You are an exporter of energy. You are contributing to a greater cause as a whole because that excess energy you don't use, whether it's from your solar or your batteries, it being fed back into the grid is making the grid cleaner and it's making it a more sustainable future altogether. So if we work collectively on this, all these manufacturers are working around the clock to develop solutions that really make an impact for all of us. And I'm really anxious to see what the future holds, but I think it's important that you don't just go with the cheapest quote. I know the Powerwall 3 is really attractive at its price point, trust me. It's hard to ignore it. But if you're not really in a rush for backup capabilities, Definitely consider the Enphase solution or other battery backup solutions that offer self-consumption designs, solar plus storage in the meantime while you wait for those manufacturers to catch up to Tesla's technology because it's not going to be that far behind. So I appreciate you watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to request your hassle-free quote from Pacific Sun Technologies by using that link down in the description below.